welcome to the video. My name is Quinn. I'm a stay at home mom and I run a small business called Cat K Crochet. I just finished my second ever market and now I'm ramping up for my third market, which is going to be this weekend at the Wildflower Festival in Oroville, California. Right now, me and baby girl, we're in the car because we need to go into town and run some errands. But I also want to stop at a thrift store and see if I can find something else to use for like the car hanger display. So I'm using, um, I'll put a picture. I'm using right now like a towel holder thing that I bought at the Goodwill. And I feel like it's deterring people from actually looking at the car hangers, which I like making. I think they're cool and cute, which I still haven't found out if they're illegal. No one, no one has told me. But I would like to find something else to display them where you don't have to pull one out from behind one another because they always become a jumbled mess. And I feel like it's preventing people from actually like looking at them because they don't want to like take them all down. And you know, you know what I mean? So we're going to head into town. Why don't you come with us? I think there's another universe Where I haven't yet felt pain And maybe in that other universe I'm a flower and you're the rain I think somewhere in a different life I'm still seven in second grade I'm so happy that I feel alright And that I haven't met my brain Good morning! It's like 9 in the morning. Um, my husband took my daughter to my parents' house so that she could spend the day over there. So I'm like totally going to be in prep mode all day. I'm really excited because I'm working on my poppies. Um, so if you don't know, I live in Northern California. It is like poppies central. They're so, they're everywhere. And I was actually just talking to my friend about this. Poppies like just grow in dangerous places. Like I tried to film some clips of how many poppies were in my town. And I literally couldn't pull over anywhere where the poppies were growing because they're all like in the most dangerous locations. Like just like on a cliff or like in a gutter next to a dangerous street. I'm making up my own poppy pattern because I couldn't find one online anywhere. And there's lots of like corn poppy flower patterns, but California poppies are a little bit different. This is what I came up with. California poppies have four leaves and I made this little like tuft of yarn scraps all together with wire to put inside the middle. Um, crunch up the petals to kind of give them that like crinkled look that poppies have with the leaf. It's just like a bunch of slip series of like slip stitches in different directions. <laughs> this little dog glue is really funny. But the leaves on poppies are so interesting. Like they look wild. Something like this, even though it looks very weird like moose antlers, is reminiscent of what poppies leaves look like. So this was just my one prototype that I had made. And I was like going to base off of... So now that I've been working on them, I made the petals a lot longer and more... Um, this shape like kind of it's kind of pointy triangle kind of rounded triangle shape I went ahead and glued on one to my thicker stems that I have and I think that looks really good I'm so happy with the way that it looks I'm super excited to like find some poppies and hold this up to them and see how see how well I did you know so I think the easiest way for me to do this is that I'm going to assembly line style put in the put in the middle insert, glue on the petals around it, wrap it with wire, and then make a bunch like this. And then I'll go back and start wrapping the stems and do the little check-in when I have some done and it looks impressive. So I finished the poppies and then I forgot to show them, but I think they look so pretty when they're all together. I wish I had made more. This is only 12. I wish I had like, I wish I made 24. Um, I think they came out really, really nice. I think the petals are a little bit more curved than I would have wanted. Um, California poppies are kind of, their petals are kind of flat and long, like more oval shaped, I guess. But I'll try to pull on these and make them more like longer petals. But the leaves, I think the leaves came out perfect. It is another find that I got at the Goodwill. I think I got it like two months ago and it's been in my garage. This was before I thought about using it for market prep. I bought it because it was only $8. And I was like, I don't know how I would ever use a rolling wicker basket, but I had to have it. 
I was like thinking of putting umbrellas in it, but I don't know why I ever thought that we were like the kind of people that had more than one umbrella. But anyways, look how cute it is. It's super tall. It has a little stopper to like keep it level. And I just shoved some pillows inside of it to see what it would look like with like a vase laying down with some lavender. I think that looks so pretty. If I put like a piece of fabric underneath of the vase to, you know, make it like look better underneath of it. Oh my gosh, can you imagine that with like some gingham fabric or something? Oh my god, like you're going on a picnic. That'd be so pretty. Okay, these are some sandbags that I ordered to attach to my canopy for the event tomorrow. Um, the canopy I'm borrowing from my sister-in-law, she didn't have any weights for it. And I know a lot of events require you to have like a certain pound per leg. Um, I didn't see anything inside the contract for this one that I'm going to do tomorrow. But I definitely wanted to have some weights on it because the weather's just been like kind of crazy and like windy and rainy off and on. And yeah, so I ordered these from Amazon. They had very good reviews. I think it was like 12 bucks for the set of four. And they're just like these kind of like raincoat material pouches. They have Velcro straps to attach it to the canopy leg. And I'm going to fill it with sand from my daughter's sandbox because Frankie, the very, very, very bad boy, pooped inside the sandbox the other day. So not only did he poop in it, but he like tore up the lining so like that black thing is like a piece of the lining of the sandbox like he was like digging something like he was being like a cat i already scooped out the sand that i thought was nasty so now i'm just gonna scoop out as much as i need to fill up these sandbags and my husband is gonna get the rest out and then we're just gonna buy new sand for the sandbox we just left staples i was picking up my business cards this is what they look like I'll handle my email it says custom orders, gifts, bridal, baby showers, and party favors, and handmade in the town that I live in. So I did the thing with the custom orders saying like bridal showers and all that stuff because my sister-in-law said that when she had her handmade soap business that that was what she got a lot of the orders from was that she did like custom little party favors. So she would do like wrappers with like, I guess, um, bridal shower names and stuff on them. And like, I don't know, maybe somebody would want to like do like some cute little tiny plushie or something or like a keychain or something like that as like a party favorite. Wanted to get them printed at a local print shop in my town and it would have been twice as expensive as getting them printed here. So they said the local print shop said that it was going to be $30 per side of card and that the minimum was 100 And I don't know how many cards this is. I think this is like 200 cards. And this was $22 to get all of these done. And it would have been $60 to print half that many at my local print shop. So that's why I had to come to Staples. Okay, look how funny this is. <laughs> I started mixing together acrylic paint so that I can paint these signs. So this is with one coat on it. And hopefully it looks better when it's done. But so I mixed together some paint. I was like, ooh, this is kind of looking like some kind of makeup, you know? It's like very like reminiscent of like a foundation. Well, I must really like this color because <laughs> this is exactly the color of my china cabinet. <laughs> Look what a good match I got. Funny because I have this color paint from the china cabinet in there somewhere. And I just spent five minutes mixing acrylic paint when I could have just opened this cabinet and gotten this color out. But I also made one with some pink. Good morning, it's market day. I'm about to blow dry my hair. I took a shower this morning. I don't know why I took a shower this morning. I should have done it last night. And I finished my makeup. I need to get dressed. I feel like I'm running out of time, so I'm kind of panicking. And um, my dad's gonna be here soon to help me load up the car and everything. Um, I got a tripod from Walmart, so maybe I can get some footage of me setting up the booth. It's also really, really cold. It's very cold outside today, so I'm going to be freezing when I go to the market all by myself. Oh my gosh, I need to fill up the sand. I need for my hair straightener to heat up, but I'm kind of having like some mom guilt. Like this is the second weekend in a row that I'm going to be away from my baby. And I know she's going to be with her dad and she loves her dad. It's really bad because I've been busy, you know, at nighttime. I've been like crocheting a lot this week and I just... You know, she's sleeping when I'm doing it, but I just, I don't, I feel guilty. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the free time. Like, I love talking to other adults and seeing people so happy to interact with my things. But 
it's different when I'm not with my baby, you know? And like, whenever you're not with your, your baby, you like a piece of your mind is like still focused on them and like worried, like what are they doing? Are they eating? Did she take her nap today? But I was talking to my friend Victoria from Comfort Loops. She's also a stay-at-home mom who does markets. And we were both talking about how like this work. So being able to go out there and do a market and besides the fact of like actually selling things and like making a little bit of pocket money, just getting like that kind of positive feedback from people is very, very validating because stay-at-home parents, we don't have a boss or like coworkers or anybody that's evaluating our work and giving us feedback or give, telling us, you know, like you did an amazing job. So making a whole bunch of items and going out there and seeing people's face like light up when they see your booth or a little kid who like falls in love with something that you made, that is super, super validating. That's validating. And I feel like I need that, even though it is hard for me to leave my baby and it makes me feel guilty. Like, I feel like I need some type of, I need to be told that I'm doing a good job. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So this is my spot and there's a tree right in the center of it. I don't even know how I'm gonna do my canopy. Okay, I was being dramatic. The tree's not actually right in front of my booth. It's to the right. So here's the tree. Here's my booth. Um, we be around. So we're at the park. Okay, let me flip it. Okay, so here is where the water is. There's like a kayak dock right there. That's where we come up when we go kayaking at this park. And way off in this area, there's like a stage where they'll be doing music. There's a kids area way over there too. And then lots and lots of vendors. I'll have a, a vendor map put up, but I think there's like 50 vendors. And then, oh look, here's, here's the big spinny thing that me and my daughter go on sometimes. I'm right behind this lamppost and I'm right next to a tree, which is fun. Um, my dad helped me put up the canopy. It wasn't that hard. We got our sandbags done. My dad actually filled those sandbags this morning for me because I didn't finish filling them. I did like one and a half and then I got bored. So my dad did it and they're really easy to tie on. They just Velcro strap to the sides of the, the canopy. And since there's a walkway back here, I was thinking about just doing like a Z shape again. Um, just because there's gonna be food trucks behind me, like in this parking lot and people might be at the food trucks and then they might wanna come this way. So I was thinking about having double sided. I don't know if I should do the flowers on the far side though, like on the walkway, or if I should do like toys over there. Maybe I'll do both. So, panicking a little bit because I don't have as much inventory as I wanted but let's use my new tripod and set up okay this tripod's a lot shorter than I thought it was gonna be um I'm gonna try to set up I think somewhere in a different life I'm still seven in second grade and I'm so happy that I feel alright And that I haven't met my brain This is what I have so far. Okay, this is the booth. 
I think I'm gonna have to flip everything. Like, I thought it might look nice when you're walking this way to see all the tables, but I think I might have to flip everything. Because all the other vendors that are over here are facing the walkway. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move the tables. I just wasn't, I didn't think about it in my mind that the tables would face, face this way. So I'm, I'm a little flustered. Um, this uh, lavender looks so pretty inside of that terracotta vase. Yeah, I had to take out that yeah, rock because it was too big. <laughs> so I might have to go hunting for some rocks. Um, I didn't have the time to make more sunflowers, so I'm down to three because I sold a bouquet yesterday. And I put two sunflowers in it and I had only five left. So the flowers are looking a little sparse. These are the cactuses that I made. Let's zoom out. Um, purple with the string of pearls, it's purple, and then pinky with, this is a pink Bernat, so it's like, it's really, it looks like cream right here, but it's like a very, very pale pink for a little moonstone cactus, or succulent. And I gotta do their prickles still, I brought the scrubby yarn with me. So I guess I'm gonna flip my tables and keep working on it. It's only like 8.30. This looks really crowded. And I didn't bring another vase. So I don't know what to do about those three sunflowers. I had another terracotta vase that I spray painted, but I gave it to the, the woman who bought the bouquet yesterday. I put her flowers inside the vase because it looks so pretty. Like I had to put it together like that. And then I didn't spray paint the one with the poppies in it because I thought the poppies wouldn't look very good with like that brownish color. I wanted them to be in the clear one. I think it looks okay like that. Okay, this is where we're at. I keep stepping on my skirt. <laughs> the bottom of my skirt is like soaking wet now. Okay. Um, bees are not staying there. I have to move them. So I forgot about my flower sign, so I put that up. Hopefully people can read it okay. I think this is fine the way it is. I just have to move the bees. Bees are going to go with the worms. And then headbands and oh my goodness. Okay, sign keeps falling. <laughs> Damn, my lips up so high, so I'll rethink that. Maybe I won't use it since I have a QR code on my business cards that I left at home. My husband's gonna bring them. He said my daughter just finished eating pancakes so she's gonna get cleaned up and I mean that's like a 40 minute process to clean up a toddler covered in pancake syrup and then he'll come down here and help. Um, here's my worms. So I was thinking that the worms could be having a picnic like in their beautiful little garden chairs. You're kind of a little one. This one I made with uh, the new baby bear from Joanne, and I thought I was just going to fall in love with it, and it was going to be a replacement for Posh, but it's not as nice as Posh. It doesn't have as much structure. Oh gosh, don't call them. Okay, let's look at it. It doesn't have as much structure. It's really, really soft, and it's a little bit furry compared to Posh. Like, let's grab Posh right here. I guess you can't really tell by looking at it. It has a different texture. It's really, really, it's more plush and more soft, but Posh just has like so much structure that it's fun to work with because it really holds its shape and Baby Bear doesn't. It's also like, I feel like I even had a size down half a hook size with the Baby Bear compared to when working with Posh. I made another weirdo one. Um, and these ones are made with Bernat Speckle, which I think is really cute. Okay, this is what we're at right now. I have bees and worms in the front. My husband's bringing the little beetle I made that I left at home. I'm gonna put it on the table like the worms are eating him. Little critters and various animals. Keychains. I'm not happy with this section if you can tell when I side. Um, I got those two bigger birds and then one cow. Chickens and car hangers. I was trying to put my sign up as my QR code but it keeps falling over the wind. <laughs> Um, here's what I did with the other sign. I painted it last night and I just used like chalkboard marker to write on it. And then that sticker came with my square reader. And I had this business card holder already at my house. So I'm going to put some business cards in that. Um, I need to put up the signs for everything like the coasters and the headbands. And then didn't change the flowers. Flowers are still the same. I just got to fluff them up. Forgot to mention I'm holding this thing <laughs> that's full of <laughs> all the like sea animals and I don't know where to put it. Okay, my husband saved the day. He came and brought me a different phone cord because my power bank wasn't working because my phone cord was like this crazy one that starts glowing when you plug it in. I think I got it on Temu. <laughs> so he brought me one that works. 
Um, all set up, I think. I think. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna change anything now, but I do need to um, put some tags on and I'm gonna do the prickles on the pink and the purple cactus. I brought the scrubby yarn with me. And then if I have like downtime, I'm gonna probably be working on bees. So let me give you a tour. So I do have that big Walgreens sign, but it keeps falling down. It's a little breezy. It's not like super windy, but it just, that sign's not standing up. So I put buggies. Um, I really, really want to do the snail council, council from um, Garden Hoe Crochet. I have those patterns, so I'm going to definitely be making some of those. I think it'd be really fun to have a bunch of bugs. And then I did all the aquatic stuff together. Um, I wanted to make some bouquets with the shrimp, and I still might do that you know, like, while I have downtime today. Um, and then I can just like write on the little tag, I shrimply adore you. I put all the little critters. I have to put the sign out. So this is that custom pug that I'm waiting for the guy to pick up. Hopefully he comes today. If he doesn't come today, then I guess I'll just sell it and then he can reorder it or something. Keychains. Um, I'm only down to one mushroom keychain. I don't know if I brought mushroom colored yarns that I can work with. We'll see. Car hangers. Um, this is that little Andy Light Creations bird pattern that I just put a car hanger thing on. And then I, this is the new sign that I made. Pink and purple cactus. Looking beautiful in the sun. My flowers with my flower sign that I made. And then here's that wafer basket that I got at Goodwill. It's looking very cute. I think in the future I'd want like two bouquets of flowers in it to like make it really big. It would have looked really pretty if I could have done like 50 poppies and I filled that with poppies. That would have looked that would have been stunning. So flowers are looking a little sparse, but I've gotten some compliments on them. I love the lavender. Definitely want to make 4,000 more lavender. First sale was a worm. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Who would have seen that coming? It was the um, the one that I just said that I made with baby bear. So it was like a little bit furrier. And actually, he was a little bit like messed up because my daughter took him and she stabbed him a bunch of times with my crochet hook. So he had a bunch of like fluff sticking out and I cut it off with scissors and I tried my best to like shove it all back in. But he wasn't looking like that great. Like he, he had better days. But yeah, another person bought it for his wife. Isn't that fun? She's gonna have a little word present. Look what I just did, those tagging things. I, <laughs> I tied it with my needle on there. Mm. So I have my headphones in, so hopefully you can hear me because there's a food truck behind us. Um, I don't know why in my mind I was thinking like, okay, there's gonna be food trucks here. I was thinking like, just like a truck that's parked with no generator on and like also no truck. Like, you know, just like the, the like camper thing that, that they sell food out of. So what I'm talking about is this thing. I didn't think that there's gonna be like a vehicle right behind me. And I also didn't in my mind imagine there being a generator on. So I'm trying not to, I'm not complaining. Like it's just a little bit noisy. It could be like way, way worse. Um, I just didn't know that there was gonna be like a big car behind me. I thought you could, I thought maybe people could like see my booth from, you know, that side. So good thing I set up facing the walkway. So I'm just tagging like a couple more things. I did decide to increase my prices on a few things like this penguin that I had made from um, the Instagram account Loud Vibrations. Um, this was about 15 and I just marked it up to 20 because I made a sitting cow pattern right here. And I used Bernat Blanket for it and I wanted to put this at 18 and this guy's bigger than that and I didn't want him to be like cheaper. So I've had him since the beginning since the first show and um, lots of kids have like picked him up because he looks like a squishmallow. So people like really like to hold them and stuff but no one's, no one's taking him home yet. Um, the little girl that I met at my first show that was like my very first customer of the day that came and bought a mystery egg for me, she's back with her mom. So that's really cute because they came and said hi to me. It's fun seeing people that I've seen before. And my very first sale of the day was another vendor who bought a, he wanted to get his wife a, a plushie and he didn't know what which one to get her and I made a joke like oh you can get her a worm and then he did <laughs> he picked her he picked out 
the the baby bear worm and I do feel I hope it looked okay because my daughter had really uh, stabbed it a bunch of times with a crochet hook. <laughs> this cow came out very cute. I usually don't do like very um, like cutesy kind of patterns like this like um, this and the little axolotls that have the bobbles for the feet like I don't really do a lot of things that kind of look like that but this cow's very cute we'll see I bet somebody will snatch it up so I hope you see lots of little kids here it's always like the best when you see a little kid get happy about the stuff you made so, I haven't done the um, scrubby yarn on the cactuses yet my hands are really cold and also I forgot my lotions my knuckles are cracking like you probably can't see but my I'm getting like little blood spots because my knuckles are cracking because my hands are so cold because that happened to anybody else. Totally forgot to bring lotion. And guess what else I forgot? I forgot my bouquet bags again. I can't believe, like, do I just need, to, I should just throw those away because I'm never gonna bring them. I'm never gonna use them on anything. I'm so mad at myself. You know what, no, I saw a comment where somebody said that I shouldn't be so hard on myself. So it's okay, everybody makes mistakes just kind of frustrating when I've been like you know seeing those bouquet bags in my house before every show and I write it on my get ready list and then I never grab them it's kind of crazy anyways I increased the price of my knees to ten dollars I had them at eight so it's been an hour I'm doing a check-in I had 21 sales and there's customers in front of me so bye so it's 11 30 check-in um, Another vendor is letting me put her hand warmers because my hands are so cold. <laughs> Very cold, but I was trying to say earlier, um, another vendor is letting me use her hand warmers, so that was super, super nice. I, she's um, the lady that invited me to the Endangered Species Fair next month, and she was very mad because I was already out of bees by the time she came to my booth, and last time I saw her, I ran out of bees too. So it's super nice that she's letting me use her hand warmers because it's really cold today. I wasn't prepared for it to be this cold, and I brought all this yarn for me, and I can't even use it because my like my fingers are acting up from the cold but let me show you my booth so it's starting to look real real empty i put the turtles right here because they were in there and filming this on my iPad right now because my phone just died. It just, I, it just stopped working like while I was trying to take a card payment. So that's like, I'm super stressed out right now. Um, I don't know what happened to it. It just stopped working and I have a power bank and I don't know, it, it died though. And it was super embarrassing. And then I couldn't take the person's card payment. And then she told me that she was trying to save her cash and I felt super bad. And then another person wanted to pay with card after that. And we tried to do Apple Pay, it was like a whole thing. Okay, I look like a, <laughs> I look like a parent at a graduation taking pictures with her iPad. Um, my sister-in-law came, so she said she's gonna go home and give me a power bank and see if that fixes my phone. I don't know where my husband is. I'm panicking. I feel super bad that I can't take those cards. I got two people's phone numbers written down so that I can Apple pay them later when my phone is working. And hopefully they're just honest people that actually pay. So let me show you my booth. It's looking very, not that great. So here's this area. Yep, looking pretty empty. I moved the car hangers there just to put something on the table. So Look at that. There's just two little birds left and then a shrimp. I was going to use those shrimps to make bouquets and now there's only one left. Um, all well, my chickens are not besides the one hatching chick. I don't know how to zoom out on the iPad so now everything's zoomed in. So then we'll just stick stuff back a little bit. Flowers, some flowers are gone. pretty this looks pretty bad okay it's 1 30 this feels so weird filming on a gigantic ipad because it looks like i'm watching myself on a tv and i don't know where the lens okay wait it's right here okay 
Um, I'm feeling kind of discouraged because my booth is super empty and I can't take cards. And also it's freezing, freezing cold. So I just feel like I'm very amateur right now. And I'm getting a headache. I like that there's lots of dogs here. And I got to pet one of those dogs that looks like a horse. I forgot what they're called, but maybe I'll put a picture. And it was super, super soft. And his head was really, really long. So it's only 1.30 and it goes on till four. And it's just really empty. So I have these bookmarks because I was working on these bookmarks earlier. I did some with like a variegated green yarn. Um, those sprout bookmarks I sold at the Arbor Day Festival for $5 and then I was selling the flower ones for eight. So I just pulled those out, but I didn't bring like a stand or anything for it. I'm down to three headbands, which is fun. Because nobody liked the headbands the first time I tried to sell them. Um, I just have the th those three cactuses left, which kind of look really pretty together. Okay, check in. It's 2.30. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a sweater now when I've com been complaining all day that I was freezing, like, why are you wearing a sweater now? If, why you weren't you wearing it earlier when you were complaining how cold it was? Because using this sweater to prop up my vase inside of that wicker basket right there, it was like the background of the vase because I forgot to, put, to bring the piece of fabric that I was gonna put inside the basket. So then I used my sweater this morning. So I've been freezing cold all day because my sweater was just being a pink background inside that basket. And now I don't need to use that basket anymore because we sold out of roses and sunflowers. So I put, just put the daisies on the table. So I have my sweater on, which is good. But the bad news is that I don't have anything left. So of flowers, we're totally out of roses, we're totally out of sunflowers. Three cactuses left, one headband. I think this is, I don't know, I guess this is. Um, I pulled out those bookmarks that I had been working on and I think I sold, I think I sold one of them. But, oh my gosh, it's just really, really empty. Okay, so keychains, got those three chickens left and then the one mushroom that looks kind of weird. Um, car hankers, it's just like circle ones. It's just like the big round head. I always guess wrong what's going to be like what people are going to like because I like these ones. These are, those were the first car, make, car hangers I made because I thought that they were cute. They're actually very lightweight. And then we got two big worms left and then that pug that the guy never came back for. So I try to be like vengeful and like sell this pug because the guy ghosted me. And now he's still on the table all alone. The last worm sold. So totally sold out of every single plushie besides four keychains and four car hangers. Okay, this is the end of the day. So, I guess I don't even have to talk about what because this is what it looks like. And there's my daddy. Okay, so the market's over. And I still haven't like really processed everything that happened. Um, I was really bummed out at the beginning of that market. I was feeling super emotional about leaving my daughter. I was also really cold. My hands stopped working because it was just so cold outside. And it's not like Oh, it just happened to get super cold and I wasn't prepared. I knew it was going to be that cold. This is why I'm frustrating. I knew it was going to be that cold and I did not like, I didn't prep at all for that. I had brought in my pink sweater with me, but I was using it as padding inside of the little wicker like pulley cart thing. And I'm too stubborn to like pull it out and put it on. So I'm cold, I'm emotional. And then also I was like, I absolutely underestimated how many people were going to be at this event and how many people actually liked the products that I had made. So I had heard from my sister-in-law who did the market before that she had 
a booth that was like near my spot and that it wasn't a good year for her and there wasn't foot traffic. And then when I got to the event, I heard from another vendor that the area that I was in was like the loser area. And they said that this is probably like where they group all the new people together because it was like the worst area. It was all the way on the bottom of the map and it was off in a corner corner and they were kind of bummed about their spot. I thought that maybe people would be able to see my booth like across the parking lot but then there was a big food truck behind me blocking the view. I wasn't able to come up with as much inventory as I wanted to and I had these like grand visions of like sections of just like nature themed things. I wanted to have a whole thing of like nature bookmarks and I wanted to have like multiple books showing different bookmarks inside of them. I wanted to have lots and lots of bugs and I wasn't able to do that. Some I wasn't able to do that. I only had one week in between the markets and I'm a mom with a baby that's about to be two and she's going through a very rough stage in her little tiny short life. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has this character flaw, but if but if I'm not able to do something the exact way I want, sometimes I just get like completely demotivated to do it. So when I was like, I'm not gonna be able to make as many bookmarks as I want, I'm not gonna put any because it's not gonna be the beautiful display I want, which I learned from. And if anything, I learned a lot of lessons going to this market. So first of all, I am very overwhelmingly grateful to my community and to all the people who stopped by and, and all the people who gave me compliments and the other vendors who gave me great suggestions. Even people in the comments of my video give me such good suggestions all the time. And I hope you guys know that I really do value your suggestions. And most of the time I do take your suggestions. <laughs> because I'm super grateful. So it totally, it reminds me a lot of after I gave birth and I had this like little tiny infant baby, other moms would apologize before they gave me advice. And they would say, you probably don't want pairing advice or you probably don't want to hear it, but this is how I, we did it. It's like, no, please, I do want to hear it. I don't know what I'm doing. Please help me. Please give me advice. You know more than I do. I want to learn. I understand that some people do get defensive or they want to do it their own way or they want that learning experience, but I, I appreciate all the advice that I can get. So if anything, this was a learning experience. The number one thing that I learned is that I need to be better at time management to make the inventory that I want. And it's not, and it's not like I'm getting super emotional right now. I'm actually just eating spicy chicken strips for lunch and it's making my nose run in my ice water. <laughs> so another valuable lesson I learned is that I need to be prepared for the weather. Totally, I need to be prepared. I could have bought a, I could have brought a blanket. I could have brought an extra jacket. I like my legs weren't cold. Like weirdly, my legs don't get very cold. But my arms and my hands, I couldn't crochet. I brought all my yarn. I couldn't do anything. My hands were hurting so bad. I also learned to always have sandbags. I actually took off two of my sandbags on opposite corners and I gave them to the booth next to me because it was like a quilters club and they had this very large quilt that they were trying to hang up and the quilt was so heavy that it was making the frame fall over. So I asked them if they, if they would like me to attach two of my sandbags to the frame of their canopy to try to like sandwich the frame together and weigh down their quilt frame. But the booth on the other side of me, they didn't have weights. And later on during the day, it did get really windy. And there was a time when their canopy just lifted up off the ground, did a circle in the air, and then flew into a food truck. It literally looked like somebody like used like magic powers to like levitate and do a twist. And then luckily nobody was hurt. And there was a bunch of teenage boys in my booth at the time. And they all ran to the rescue to go grab that canopy. It was so nice of them. Another obvious valuable lesson that I learned is to always charge your phone and always have a battery backup. My phone dying during the event on top of how anxious I felt and being freezing cold and being emotional because I was missing my daughter, like took me to such a dark place and I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. There was no way of me calling my husband. I kept having customers come inside my booth and my phone died when I was in the middle of running a transaction on somebody's card. My phone just died. It just powered off. The person didn't take it very well. Like they weren't mean, but they weren't very nice about it. I had two more people immediately want to use cards and I had to tell them I'm so sorry there's something wrong with my phone. Those two people were really really sweet about it. Neither of them had cash but what they did let me do is, which I probably don't recommend because I got both of their phone numbers and then later on when my phone was charged I just Apple requested them the cost of the things that they picked out and both of them paid which was really sweet. They didn't even ghost me. And another valuable lesson that I learned is to always download the Square app on whatever other device you have. So I had brought my iPad with me, but because I didn't have Wi-Fi, my, my iPad doesn't have any cellular on it. 
I couldn't download the Square app. What I have read is that you can use the Square app without Wi-Fi, and then when you get to a place that has Wi-Fi, the transactions will just run. So I think that those are all really valuable lessons to learn. I wish I didn't have to experience the issues to have to learn the lesson, you know, but sometimes that's just how life is. And if my mistakes can help out anybody else who's new to doing markets, then in a weird way, it's kind of worth it, you know? So those were hard moments at the time, but at the end of the day, looking back, I had an amazing time. I mean, you saw the amount of stuff I had left on the table. So the items that I had left that weren't cactuses or flowers, I have inside of this bin. I have two car hangers left and they're the little pigs with blush. I have one headband left. I'm so happy that people liked my headbands. You guys, it was so cute being able to look out on the crowd and seeing little kids wear my headbands while they're walking around. It was so fun. I have eight coasters left, so I sold two sets. And the two people that bought them like really liked the fact that they could pick which colors went inside of them, which I thought was fun. The first person who bought a set for me told me, honestly, I'm not gonna use these as coasters. I'm just gonna tack them to my booth. So, okay, when you leave my booth, you can do whatever you want with them. So I still, I still really like these. I think they're super cute. I still think these are really cute. And I was thinking I could just sell the rest of them as like bunting, like get a long piece of yarn and string it through and, and maybe sell that for like $25. So my bookmarks that I was being so stubborn about not showing, I put them out on the table and these are the ones that I have left. This is a sprout and two tulips. I believe that I sold three or four when I was there. I know that they were all the sprout ones and then I had one like daisy one that was really cute. And the person who bought it was the coordinator of the very first event I went to at the Arbor Day Festival. And look how cute this picture is that she posted on Facebook. She didn't tell me that I could share this but I hope it's okay. And then the very last things I have is just three chicken keychains. Um, these two are made with Bernat Speckle, and this one is made with Bernat Lilac Dream, I think. I know I showed I picked up my business card from Staples, and I just want to show how many is left. So I gave out a lot of business cards, and I wasn't somebody who thought that business cards were, like, super, super important, but look how many are missing. So before I show the numbers, I want to show what I bought at the market. I didn't get to do a haul because I didn't get to walk around this time, but I did get to go into the booth of the vendor next to me. That was called DB Designs. And I got these earrings. The lady running it is named Debbie and she's a retired teacher who makes polymer clay earrings. Look how beautiful those are. It's a little Luna Moth and it has like a gradient effect to it. I'm just gonna, I'll just add a picture because I'm not doing a good job showing it. But she has some really, really cool designs. She had a bunch of dragons that I really liked. So I'm gonna show you something that's a little bit horrendous and is very not professional. And I am fully aware that I need to not go about doing it like this in the future. But this is my notebook of items that sold during the event, which my daughter also drew on when I got home that day. For this, she's really into making circles right now. Let me show you one of her circle papers. Isn't this incredible? She's an artist. See that I started the day off writing inside of this orange marker before I switched to a purple pen and then I ran out of space on this page. I guess that this is still good to keep track of the flowers, but now that I know that everything else is just gone, then I don't really need, you know, to add up everything else. I hope that you'll be proud to know that I only discounted one purchase, and that was somebody who bought $90 worth of flowers. She had made herself a big bouquet, and also she was getting a large worm. I looked at her flowers, and I said, you picked out so many, I'm just going to do the entire bouquet for 50 and then plus the cost of the worm, so your total is 70 so I did that because it was nearing like the end of the day. And also I'm not good at math, okay? So if something ends in like a five or a zero, I can probably add it up. I priced my lavenders at $8. And when I looked, they had three lilies that were $15 each and she had like one or two daisies and then a bunch of lavender. I was like, said I was just like, how about $70 is perfect for me. So my total square transactions were $247. And my total cash transactions was $600. My total earnings, $847, minus the booth fee, which was $100, my most expensive booth fee, minus the square expenses of $7.50, my total take-home amount was $710. So unfortunately, I have some bills to pay, but I will be putting a portion of my earnings into my Strawberry Baby Jungle Gym Fund. And I do need to go yarn shopping so I can start working on products for the Endangered Species Fair, which is in two weeks on April 20th in Chico, California. I literally just have to make everything in two weeks. 
My husband got me a new pair of compression gloves on Amazon. Have been really nice. I have pretty small hands. The fingers on these ones are pretty tight. I will try to make sure that I'm wearing these very often so that I take care of my hands and I'm doing stretches. I don't know if anybody is going to relate to this, but I feel like most of the people who watch my channel are probably parents. I had some major mom guilt this last week being away from my daughter. I felt I felt like the amount of mental energy that I was putting into trying to do a market was somehow taking away from the amount. <sighs> okay, these are... Okay, these tears are actually because I'm thinking about my daughter and not the spicy chicken strips. Okay, I'm gonna try, okay, I wanna try to get this out. So, so for some reason I was like telling myself that the amount of mental energy that I was putting into getting ready for the market was taking away from the amount of the mental energy that I put into raising my kid each day. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't make me or anyone else a bad mom or parent to pursue something that isn't 100% taking care of your child. And now we all deserve time to decompress at the end of the day. And saying when my daughter goes to bed at night is, it does help me decompress. And seeing people be so happy to pick out something that I made is very validating. And I guess I'm not doing a good job of like thoughts that are actually going through my head, but I do want to say that. After the market, I got home and I felt very emotional and also my house was filthy. Not a bashing my husband thing. My husband is an incredible husband. He's an amazing, amazing father who loves his daughter more than anything. And he really does do a lot around the house, but he also works a lot and he works really hard. When he gets home in the evening, like I don't want him to be walking around and picking up. I want him, I want him to relax. So like walking into the house after the market, I just like kind of realized like I might have been neg neglecting some of my responsibilities at home and and I really need to get better at figuring out some time management skills to where I can keep my house the way that I want it especially keeping food in the fridge <laughs> like I have a baby I have that we I have a baby we need fresh groceries I really hope that that rambling made sense if anybody else is out there market prepping and your house is like getting a little bit more dirty than you would normally like it it's okay. Like we we're humans and we deserve to be focusing on something else for a little bit. I just hope that I can personally get better at managing my time. Keep things in, keep things in a way that's going to make me happy. So that's it. Okay. I'm going to finish eating my chicken strips. I might just let myself cry because I feel like maybe that's where this day is going to head. I'm going to put the social media down below for DB Designs. If anybody wants to check out her work, I think I think her jewelry is very incredible. And coming up, I have the Endangered Species Fair, so my next video will probably be market prepping. I need to do some yarn shopping. You have markets coming up soon. I hope they're incredible. Hope you're having a wonderful day. See you later. Stay safe. So look how many. I'm not even gonna pick this up right now. Oh my gosh, my mouth's on fire. Those are so spicy. <laughs>